the thing that we have to remind ourselves is motivation and commitment come from action, right? Like action is the first thing. Everything else follows. Action is what's going to create the feelings. And too often we try to think our way into a new way of feeling when really the secret is you feel your way into a new way of thinking. Action is going to get your way. Yes. Action is going to get you to where you want to be. And the key is when you're feeling like a slug and you feel like any action is daunting, ask yourself, what is the least action I can take? What is the smallest possible action I can take? And that always makes it seem more palatable. Hey there, Adam. It's 2024. We made it. How's it going? It's going all right. Happy New Year. Yes. We made Happy it. Happy New Year. Yes, we made it in one piece, sort of. Uh, my youngest, oh no! My youngest son had a freak accident, fell on his chin, opened it up, needed a bunch of stitches. Getting those stitches out today, so uh, I still keep seeing the fall on my head. A little PTSD there. Little. Oh. Well, nothing like starting the year off with a trip to the urgent care. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I think, I don't know about you, but I, I kind of feel like I need a little trip to the urgent care. <laughs> just, I have been feeling some resistance to getting back into what most of us call the groove. And uh, I don't know, I thought maybe we could talk about that a little bit today because, well, I feel like there is kind of this divide. Maybe it's not stark. There's definitely people who have blown into 2024 feeling the momentum you know, just really excited about how they navigated their holidays. And I'm not saying I'm not excited about how my holidays went. I'm thrilled with it. I'm just feeling a little resistant (laughs) to getting back into the groove. What are you feeling? Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, the stitches in the fall kind of put a damper on our holidays. Um, But we definitely slowed down a lot. Lots of movies, lots of relaxing, lots of chilling. And, you know, I always equate it to like, you know, the engines on a big boat, like, you know, uh, in the Titanic, when they saw the iceberg, it's like they turn, you know, they turn the engines off and they like, it gets, it's really slow for it to get started, you know, to go in reverse. And it's kind of like, that's how I feel like a lot of us are. It's like the engines have been off. They're slowly starting and turn and then turn and they turn and it takes a little while to get back into that, into that groove. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So I'm feeling, you know, excited. I love the new year. It, it is, a, you know, a time of reflection. It's a time of uh, new beginnings. I think that's super exciting. But there is also the part of me that's like hanging on to the last week of, you know, just hanging around, watching movies with the kids and, and wife. Yeah. So this makes me think about, I think, I, I don't remember what month it was, but we had, um, we had a, a podcast a, a few months ago about catching yourself in the slip, right? This is that place. I, I know for a lot of people, a lot of my clients were kind of like in that little slippery spot. And it's like, oh, these things that I was doing through the holidays, having a hard time letting those go. And it's like, all right, everybody. And I, anybody who's listening, anybody who's watching right now, I think this is a great moment. I want you to imagine if you're in the slip and you know what I mean by the slip. We all know what we mean, right? Like for me, it's like, oh, I'm having a little chocolate every night or a cocktail more frequently, whatever. Or maybe I'm pushing off working out. These are what I'm talking about with the slips. You know your personal slips. So imagine if you don't catch yourself in the slip, where are you going to be a week from now? All right. And now imagine you still don't catch it and you, you're two weeks out or a month out or six months out. And that's the part of our brain we have to start to re-engage, right? So that we catch that slip and then we have to figure out which lemon we're going to bite, right? Because we all know Adam's favorite compass of discomfort is required to pull us out of the slip. Adam, do you have any suggestions? Yeah. And I think it's important to remember that it could feel scary and daunting when you're in that slug-like state and getting back to the groove feels scary and daunting, but it's really not as bad as you think it was. Like I was in that state you know, a few days ago, 
you know, my wife baked cookies and like, you know, we were just indulgent and it was conscious and it was intentional. But like you said, very quickly, you can get into the, you know, routine or practice of like, ooh, let's have a cookie after dinner or let's have some ice cream after dinner because we wanted to make it fun for our kids. It's, you know, holidays, whatever. And I found that the more I eat this stuff, the more I want it. Um, so the mm. first day or two back is always the hardest. And it's important to remember those foods are designed to be addicting, right? Like it's not, you know, it's not that you don't have willpower. It's not that you're, you have a character flaw. They're just designed to be addicting. So I always remind myself the first day or two is the hardest day back. But once I'm back in the groove, it does feel good. It always feels good to do good, right? It does. Um, I kind of equate it to, you know, pleasure versus happiness. Pleasure is wonderful, but it's very fleeting. Whereas happiness, I think, is just more fulfilling. Uh, it takes growth. It takes being uncomfortable. Like, that's way more lasting. Um, yeah. So I guess to answer your question or to, you know, uh, finish the thought, it's more about getting back in the groove isn't as scary as you think it is. Um, and it's not as daunting as you think it is. It really takes one or two choices maybe one or two bouts of intense discomfort. And again, discomfort in quotes, because, you know, there's also, uh, you know, there's the, the discomfort of going for running a marathon and discomfort of, you know, choosing fruit over chocolate. Right. Right. Well, and I think this is important. It isn't that it isn't as scary as we might think it is so long as we don't let it fester. Right. And I had this very conversation with a client this morning. He's in the slip. And I said, we've been here. You have the skills. You have the tools. We know what it's going to take to pull yourself out of the slip. And I said, and if you let it fester, you're going to be crying. You're going to be crying because your weight's going to be up. You're going to be wishing you hadn't. So let's, I told him, I'm like, look for the itch. Look for the itch today. If you found it, you got to hang on to it. That's all you got to do. And we got really kind of granular on what steps he wanted to take in order to pull himself out of the slip because a lot of times, and this happens to all of us, right? If one thing starts slipping, everything else starts slipping too, right? Like food started slipping and his sleep got off and then he was off work and he was staying up late and like it just yep. snowballs. Yep. So I said, all right, that's a lot of things to feel like you have to turn around all at once. Let's pick one thing. And so he said, okay, I want to, for him, he felt like pulling out the processed foods was going to help him kind of correct course on everything else. It was going to touch everything and really make the biggest impact. And he felt very empowered to do that. And so we had to put a plan in place. Okay, well, what are you going to do first? Right? And so setting out fruit when he makes his dinner at night so that there's no question. If you want to have a snack after dinner, it's what you've set out already. So it's that kind of work, which we all we all have these tools and skills. The important thing is don't let it fester because then it really is, it's going to feel overwhelming and a lot scarier than this moment right here, at least in my opinion. Right. I love that. I think it's a good reminder that fitness is a decision. And the kicker is we have to make that decision every day, right? And if we choose, let's say fitness, it gets easier and easier as time goes on and we start to build momentum and it becomes, you know, we get into these virtuous cycles where one thing impacts other things positively. And suddenly we feel unstoppable. We feel we have a ton of momentum. We feel incredible. But on the flip mm -hmm. side, fitness is a decision we make every day. And if we stop making that decision, that momentum can get lost very quickly, right? And we yes. can quickly go from a state of momentum to a state of inertia. And I know there's some people who are rare to go right now. You know, it's early January. I love that, right? And it's important to remember though, we want to show up for ourselves every day, even when you're feeling unstoppable, you know, like I always say, like happiness and success, there's a price of emission every day, right? We can't expect to feel great. We can't expect to see results if we're not showing up every day. There is a price of emission. Um, so just to finish that thought is like, you know, that that decision, if we go the other route, we can get quickly into a state of inertia. Um, but the beautiful part is all it takes is one or two decisions and you're right back to where you were. Um, and you can start to feel momentum again and have that, you know, uh, tailwind instead of henwind. Yes. Yes. It touches everything. It touches everything. And, and, and to be clear, like, don't, don't necessarily go for the most Herculean effort required decision, right? Like, like you said, like, don't be like, well, tomorrow I'll run a marathon. 
and then that'll fix everything. (laughs) It won't fix anything. But like, ask yourself, genuinely ask yourself, where do I feel the least amount of resistance? Out of kind of our core foundational, you know, health practices, right? The sleep, the nutrition, the fitness, the stress reduction, the fun. Remember our last podcast, the recommendation was to put fun on your list. All right, so where do you feel the least amount of resistance? And then make a plan and just make a decision and start working on it. And it will infect everything else you have going on. And that momentum will build. Yeah. What is your one lever where when you push down that lever, everything else seems to rise in a good way? Oh, my tether. My tether for sure on a daily basis. But in particular... So this morning was our first morning back with school routine, work routine, everything like that. Alarm went off at 5.15 and I hit snooze and there was like this little part of my brain that was like, no, you got to get up and tether, like just do it. And I put my feet down on the floor and I went and I got on the mat and it did. It, it just sets the tone and trickles out for everything. So that's for me. What about for you? So for the newbies, that's, that's yoga on the mat. Oh, right. It is. It's yoga. And, and I give myself permission to be clear. It's not like it has to be 30 minutes every day. There are days where all I do is lay in extended child's pose because that's what I've got. But my tether is getting on the mat. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, my tether is weightlifting for sure. Um, weightlifting with some good music that to me, uh, just when I, when I'm weightlifting after a training, I just feel great. I feel strong. I feel energized. And because I feel that way, I'm not tempted to use or not tempted as much to use food to you know make me feel better. So for me, there's no doubt it's weightlifting. Um, and I tried to do some weightlifting. I, I did. I didn't try. I did weightlifting. I, I did work out you know over last week, but I made a conscious choice to make my sessions a lot shorter because I really wanted to just maximize my time with my family. Um, so. You know, instead of doing what I usually do, I just cut it short. I turned down the dial. I didn't turn it off. And that helped. That helped a lot. Um, but having a full, complete session uh, with some good music really uh, for me is what is the one lever that when I push, everything else gets lifted in a positive way. Yeah. And, and to say this, once you decide what your lemon is and you put your teeth in, it actually gets a lot easier, right? Like it just, it's the start. It's the start. So just challenge yourself to pick a lever, put your hand on it and start pulling it, you know, because once you're in it, you're like, okay, all right, these, these wheels are starting to turn. Can I share, I mean, one of the most powerful pieces of advice I've ever got in my life is from my mom. And, you know, I think about it all the time. Um, you know, I, it's the advice is the monster is never as scary as it seems. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I was a little kid, like I'd be nervous to go to elementary school. Then it was middle school. Then it was high school. Then it was college. Like, you know, after a break, I'd be nervous to go back to like, there was all these things and should always remind me the monster is never as scary as it seems. And I think that is applicable to so many aspects of life. So many times where it's just the anticipation is way worse than the actual event. And, you know, again, it can apply to so many things. In this case, it's, you know what, choosing fruit, let's say, over chocolate isn't as scary or as daunting as we might we might think it is, right? Or getting back in the groove isn't as scary as we might think it is. And it just starts with that one thing that can really make such a difference. Yeah. And I think it's really important that we continue to practice thinking about how we feel afterward. Right? Like you always say, no one ever went out and conquered the world after eating a pizza. But we never regret, you know, eating that healthy meal or going for that walk or taking a 10 minute rest when we were feeling stressed and worn out. You know, if you can just take a moment and think about how am I going to feel after I make this choice? It's such a huge guiding light, right? And then you do realize that monster isn't as scary as it seems and I'm going to feel great for facing it. Right. And the thing I think about is like... Yes, it's tricky to think about the future versus now, right? We often, you know, trade what we want, you know, in the future for what we think we want now. But the thing that helps me is the later 
the after is so much longer than the now, right? So like I could think I really want a cookie or a chocolate or whatever it is, that'll last maybe two minutes, right? The afterward lasts, you know, a long time, hours and hours. That feeling of satisfaction, that feeling of accomplishment, that feeling of saying yes to what I really want, or I should say, or saying no, because some, I like to say, I mean, we've talked about this, sometimes saying no means yes to what you really want, right? Mm -hmm. So thinking about how much longer it lasts, right? Like saying no gives you a lot more satisfaction and pleasure. Um, what's the old quote? You know, the sacrifice of a pleasure is a pleasure in itself, right? There is some pleasure yes. in saying no to things, right? Because again, you're, you're staying true to what you really want, your long-term goals, your rational mind, not your short-term irrational mind. Yes. Yeah. It's like the burn after a good strength session. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that less, I mean, that's, that's why, I mean, you know, it's not a coincidence. I feel awesome after I work out, right? It's not a coincidence. You feel great after you get to your yoga. Right. Um, yeah. And, you know, for some people it's removing the processed foods, right? Like, we don't get bonus points for slaying the dragon, right? It's much easier to avoid the dragon than it is to slay it. So if you have leftover yes. treats, if you have leftover holiday stuff, make it easy on yourself. It's only food. It's not your best friend. It's not your worst friend. You know, I think for some of us, it's really hard to throw away things. It's only food. And, you know, the thing I always think about is eating food we don't need or want is still a form of waste. Right. Because there's a lot yes. of us that's like, well, I don't want to waste it. I paid for it or this and that. It's still a form of waste to eat food you don't want. Or need in your body. Yes. 100 percent. Yes. Yep. You know, and the other the other piece of, you know, information about throwing away food you don't want or need to eat. You're then saying I'm designing my environment right in a designed, a well-designed and appointed environment. Sets you up for what you want to achieve, right? And and keep in mind, the re, the con, you know the reverse of that is true as well. If you leave those things in your environment that you don't want or need to eat, you're designing your outcomes, right? Like it's true both ways. So think about that. Like if you would design your environment to support your goals, what would that look like? And if you're choosing not to do that, what what are your outcomes going to be? Right. Exactly. It's, you know, if, if I were to set my environment up to fail, what would I do? And for a lot of people, their environment is setting themselves, set, setting themselves up to fail at this moment, right? So get it back to an environment where if you want to succeed, what would you do? Um, yes. You know, and it reminds me of like, um, I don't know, you know, these memes that are just like, you know, it's the starter pack of something, right? Like the, you know, the, the starter pack of, you know, I have no energy and I feel no, no motivation, right? Well, what is, what is included in that starter pack? It's lots of processed foods around. It's no time for exercise. It's um, no time to sit still for a little bit or just feel your feeling. Like, you know, there, a lot of us are in that, we're doing those things and we wonder, I have no motivation. I'm not feeling committed. It's because you're, you're not doing the things that make you feel energized and motivated. You know, the thing that we have to remind ourselves is motivation and commitment come from action, right? Like action is the first thing. Everything else follows. Action is what's going to create the feelings. And too often yep. we try to think our way into a new way of feeling when really the secret is you feel your way into a new way of thinking. Action is going to Act get you. your way. Yes. Action is going to get you to where you want to be. And the key is when you're feeling like a slug and you feel like any action is daunting, Ask yourself, what is the least action I can take? What is the smallest possible action I can take? And that always makes it seem more palatable. Yes, absolutely. Light the fuse. Action is the lighter. Right. That's it. Oh, I, I That's can't it. tell you. It, it, you know, it's, that is one of my pet peeves when people tell me I don't feel motivated or committed. Yeah, no one feels motivated <laughs> or committed after they're eating pizza and cookies all day or week. Right? I don't feel like no one does. Right? You're not no. going to. Um, and you know, there's going to be, and, and for those that are raring to go right now and are feeling great and you know, it's like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Amazing. I love that. But there might be an inevitable time where you don't feel as motivated or committed as you do. But the important thing to remember is 
The number one reason why we stop succeeding is because we stopped doing what made us successful. And if you keep showing up, if you keep practicing these things, it'll become routine and then habit and you're less likely to fall off that cliff. So keep showing yes. up for yourself. Success, happiness has a price of admission. It does. And it's some form of action every day. You have to make a decision and take an action every day. Yep. All right. Well, that's our that's our first dose here in 2024. I think, you know, let's get out of the slip, y'all. Let's do it. Because I've been telling everybody, I think this year, there's something about this year, 2024. I don't know what it is. I just have a really good feeling about it. And that's just in general, like really, really positive outlook. So it starts now. I get out it. of the slip. I love it. Our brain is the world's biggest label machine maker. And if you're imprinting <laughs> that this year is going to be great, then you're going to make it great. So you might as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, happy right, Adam, year, anything guys. Else? Super excited for what's in store for us. We have a lot of cool things we're cooking up. And let's make it a great year. Choice by choice, we can and are shaping the way we feel and look. And that's pretty, pretty empowering. Absolutely. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Take care.